I know. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I had only, I, I heard about the issue in general. I had no idea what the details and the specifics. That just started it. So it started me looking at all the rules that it relates to art and signs and stuff, because I couldn't figure it out. You have people with flagpoles on trees, on their mailboxes, which are not allowed under the rules. But do they get the letters, you know, they get the t take it down response. You have garbage cans that are in the driveway all, all week long. Do they get the response? I got a letter from Kika last fall saying I had two weeks to fix my yard because there was too much dirt exposed. And I went to call them up and said, I plan to redo the whole yard next spring. So can we wait till then? The answer was no, you have to fix it now. So I went out and spread rice and got it all covered up. But I walked up and down the street and I sent them a list of 30 properties on Bufflehead that had the same problem. Did they get fixed? No. And I was told that because they're not resident owners, they treat non-resident owners with a little more flexibility than resident owners because they're there all the time. See, these are the kinds of things that really get people frustrated, at least me. So um, that's something I've never heard of because uh, I've been a non-resident owner and a resident owner, but I, I've never heard that there's a different standard of of treatment, let's say if you're in the preserve and you're a non-resident, that your property gets treated differently than someone next door who's a resident. That's a new one to me, but I would like to look into that and find out where in the world I came from. I can't find it anywhere in the rules. I think it's just one of these, these things. I mean, I remember years ago getting a certified letter from Pika because we had a seashell sitting on top of our mail post, box post. And it rusted cup hook underneath the mailbox post, which a lot of old houses have, and I never understood what they were there for. But we were threatened with them coming out at my expense to take those things down. And it was just a little clamshell sitting up there. Yeah. Yet there's a house on Surf Song that has a whole garland hanging over their mailbox that's been there for years. There, there's no doubt there are inconsistencies, and these are things that I hope to address. Um, and I might solicit your your help in in putting and, together. Uh, I, you know, and I've offered to do that, Terry, and that's one of the yeah. reasons I started creating this little memo trying to compare all the rules. Okay. I think the problem is, is very clear to me, and that is the rules are so complicated, and you have to look at so many places. If you could just have one place where you go and say, oh, here's the rule for lights, or here's the rule for signage, or here's the word, the, here's what happens when you put art in your front yard. So with our new technology suite, we're, we're going to be able to make all that information very readily available. Uh, Here's my last and going through that process, hopefully we will revise it uh, in a way that, that makes it, uh, you know, understandable, eliminates a lot of rules that probably exist that don't need to exist or are dupli du duplicative. Um, so we, we, will, we will definitely uh, be looking at that. You also uh, should know that one of the things we're looking at is having Kika take, take, out, uh, take up uh, part of the responsibilities for the ARB um, because that is, that is something that I think we're hopeful of accomplishing. It's not easy to do, but I think we're, we're hopeful that we might be able to do that and streamline that for our, our owners. Right. Two other quick things. One is, and I've said this so many times, I'm just tired of saying it, but I'll say it one more time. I really would like them to consider making Bufflehead, Glen Abbey, and Flyway a four-way stop. It's the only way to stop the people from speeding through there. It's the only way to make it safe for all the pedestrians that cross there, and there are a lot of them. And it really would help slow people down. I mean, it's not it's a traffic calming device, and I've worked on those a lot in my career, that really does work. Um, the other thing is I was not trying to harp on Jimmy or anybody else. Jimmy has always been very responsive to me, as has Eddie and Holly. When, when I ask questions, I get answers. But I, I, I get frustrated because some of the times it's all, you know, that's the way the rules are, and that's okay. You know, we, we tried to have a celebration for all the graduates that were on the island, and we had about 20 of them set up. And we went around circles trying to find a place to do it. And the mayor suggested we use the amphitheater behind the this town hall, which I didn't even know existed, which is really nice if you haven't seen it. Just needs to be cleaned up. 
And then when we went to talk to Stephanie Tillerson about it, she said, well, no, you're gonna have more than, than 10 people there and you can't do it. And I said, but we're gonna have clusters of people. We're just gonna have a little celebration, announce the graduates and try to make something positive out of this. No, the town wouldn't help us, Tika wouldn't help us, the resort wouldn't help us. We just got nowhere and just gave up on it. Well, I'm sorry you had that experience and um, there are ways to say no and there are ways to say no. Uh, it doesn't sound like you had the most courteous of responses and uh, I'm, I'm sorry that that's over and done with, but I do pledge to you that we are going to be uh, getting at these issues uh, because they, they've been neglected for far too long and we have a very different uh, population uh, here now. Uh, we have many issues that uh, when this resort was first put in place, we had beautiful narrow bike paths and now they've become overrun. One other thing about the bike paths, just so I can tell you something else we're doing, we are getting uh, two bids on refurbishing uh, part of the, uh, the bike paths so that uh, we can eliminate some of the problems. We're not gonna be able to do the entire length of the bike path, but we are onto that issue and we do know that it's a problem. Okay. Who would like to be next? Okay, Paul. Jerry, first of all, um, thank you for hosting this. I think these community outreach programs are valuable. Um, just a couple of quick things. Um, I think the, the governance is complex and I think that's been known for some time. I, I do think a change of the reporting relationship of the ARB is important. Maybe when the island was first being developed, having the ARB report, report to the developer or the responsibility of the developer made sense, but it doesn't make sense now. So if you're looking at a change in governance there, I, I think that's a good thing. I think it makes sense for the community to be responsible for the community standards and a clean way to do that, not saying it's an easy or straightforward way, but a clean way to do that is to, to change the ARB to a Kika uh, responsibility. Uh, that, that was the main point I wanted to make. Two other things. I would second the comments about speeding. We, we like many of you, are, are um, uh, frequent bikers. And um, we notice people uh, on, the, on the roads going way, way too fast. So I think better, whether it's speed boxes or whatever, better enforcement, I think, is important. Our island is getting denser. It will continue to get denser. Um, and that, that's something that we need to worry about. And then finally, just very quickly, I think being able to communicate with board members is important. Holly may correct me, but I don't think your emails are on the website. I think there's one general email for the board and I think if the board members had their own individual email addresses posted uh, to the community, that would be uh, both helpful and a good sign. Uh, that's it for me. Holly, uh, I don't know whether that's true, but I do know that the intent and the, uh, what we uh, plan to do is to make our emails uh, available so everyone can communicate either to the whole board or to one of us individually, if that's what you uh, so choose to do. Um, Holly, is that correct? It, it, it is at this time only the board at kica.us email that is on the website. And Jerry, you and I have talked about this. We both have had experience where you email that board and you get a note saying that, thank you for your email. The staff will look at it and try to address the issue and the board will be given a copy at the next board meeting or whatever. I, I tried that a few times. I never heard back, so I, I just didn't do that. Um, I, I think one of my pet peeves, and Jimmy and I have had lots of conversations, and he doesn't disagree with me, is that if you send someone an email, if you make a phone call and leave a message, those folks should have a responsibility to at least acknowledge they got your call or your message. They may not be able to answer it right away, but 
it frustrates me no end and it frustrated me when I was in, in my work that I get phone calls from people saying, I've been trying to reach so-and-so in your office for two weeks and they won't return my call. And when I find out that they're actually there, they just don't want to return the call, that's just not acceptable. I, I, I completely agree. I, I, uh, and, and we are changing that. There, there is, uh, you know, we're hard at work. Uh, a lot of things get very ingrained. The behaviors are, you know, hard to undo, but, but we will definitely do that. You will get answers. As, as Brad said that at the beginning of the meeting, sometimes you may not like them, but you're going to get an answer or you're going to get referred to someone who can give you an answer. Sometimes the person you contact needs to uh, go to a higher authority or someone of a different province uh, to answer your questions. But we, we will get back to you. Uh, and when we don't, please take my email and, and bitch at me. I don't mind. I didn't take this uh, uh, job lightly. I really took it to try and make some, uh, some changes and to get the board to be uh, you know, an asset to you and not a barrier. Thank you. Okay. You know, uh, you're, you're talking about um, communication and how to put things together. And I want to kind of take us up a notch because while I think these individual concerns or issues about speeding or how the landscaping looks are really important, I think the broader issue here is uh, one, Jerry, that you keep talking about, which is how we're communicating back and forth with the board. And um, I think there are many examples. The question I submitted ahead of time talked about your current chair's announcement that there was gonna be a new path forward for the board because there was a contentious relationship, my word. Um, and I really, I'm wondering how you and David and Brad who are hosting these um, sessions with the community are going to be able to convince the rest of your board members to actually put in place things that address these issues. Because um, the things that I've heard today, I've heard a lot. And when I was a board member, we heard these things a lot too. And so the key for me is how are you moving forward? And how are you going to involve community members in that? You know, you announced you're going to have a new uh, security task force. There's a new HR committee. Are those, I said this this morning on Java with Jimmy, are those things open for community members to volunteer for? Or are those members of your groups going to be only board members or chosen by board members to participate? Um, we're facing a, a difficult situation. You know, having been on the board, I know it's hard for people to think about running, but um, one way to run is involving, getting people to be involved with Kika, not just on these sessions, but to run for the board, to be part of committees, task forces, whatever you want to call them. So I wrapped a whole bunch of stuff in there, but you know, my bottom line is, um, how, how are you going to actually do the things that you're talking about? How, how are you going to make it happen? Uh, well, I can speak personally, uh, and then I can speak hopefully for at least uh, Brad and, um, and Dave. Um, we agree. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, mm -hmm. I think I've reached out to a couple of people about the security. Uh, Phil was one of the people that, uh, that I spoke to about being involved in that. And I definitely think um, without getting too unwieldy, uh, you want to have members of the community uh, who have perhaps a particular interest or knowledge involved in, in those committees. Um, and we want those committees to be, uh, you know, action oriented, not just long standing committees that go on and on and ultimately fade into the dust, but with a specific charge uh, and an attempt to solve a problem and then uh, very much the way I uh, ran the uh, uh, implementation of the IT system. I had a committee, two uh, non-board members who had knowledge of, of uh, computer systems, involved them. We did our job, monitored the system, got it implemented, and we withdrew. Uh, and I think that's the way, number one, to get more people involved. Uh, and to accomplish things with committees. But very definitely, uh, I know Brad believes it, I know Dave believes it, 
I can't speak for the other board members, I don't know, um, but we are moving in that direction. We're urging everyone to move in that direction. Uh, you know, it's been I, a problem. I, so, I, I really, I hear that very clearly. Uh, and I'll point out the obvious, you brought up earlier the uh, issue with the adult pool. Had there been a group of homeowners, property owners, somehow participating in that discussion, maybe the outcome of that would have been a little bit different. I'm not predisposing what might have happened there, but um, the community was shocked. And I think you as board members were kind of shocked that a decision was made that you were unaware of. That affected a lot of people. And I hope that the community uh, doesn't lose sight of the fact that we need more input to be heard so that decisions are made together, not unilaterally. That's my soapbox for today. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, you know, there will be an announcement, I guess, coming from um, Jimmy the day. But I, I, I will take credit for uh, getting an, uh, an emergency board meeting uh, yesterday to really look into this whole pool issue and to see what we could do in the short term uh, because we heard so much uh, pushback from the community about various opinions about the whole way that was handled and what the realities of it all. Uh, we came to a decision and, and uh, for, for the short term, um, and we, you know, we, we very much uh, understand that that issue, we have to explore it. How, how did we get to, was this actually intended to be an adult only pool? Uh, you know, was it billed as that? Was it sold as that? Um, and uh, it was a board decision. It was made before I was on the board. I don't even know how the, the whole project got started. Um, but uh, we're looking into it uh, and we will come back with answers uh, and make a determination of going forward after this season uh, as to how that whole resource is allocated and how it's defined and we need to look into how we got to where we did. Yeah, you know, uh, having been on the board during the renovation of the Sandcastle, there was never any discussion that was different than calling that an adult pool. So um, that to me is, is really startling. And I think that it's the board before my tenure that uh, was involved in that renovation. So whether or not that was what was promised to the community, I think the Kika staff did a tremendous job at the Sandcastle, making sure that that pool was only accessible by people who were first over the age of 18 and then 21. So I would wonder why there was so much staff effort put into doing that if indeed the intent was to make that a family pool. So there are many options before you, but um, I think we can argue those details. We have to sort of move forward and figure out what, what are we doing here? Um, I've heard a lot from community members who are really upset with how that decision was made and the lack of information about it. So I encourage the board to come up with um, a good discussion at your November meeting about what, how did we get there? How was that decision made without input from the community? And then um, whatever decision your board has made now, what are the implications of that? So. Well, I, would, I would go back to whatever decisions we're making just on that, Kathy, are short term. Um, something was put in place, uh, and we have to dig into how that happened. The original intent of the pool, as I understand it, was it was always an adult pool. But there are people who think differently about that. And so we have to go back, pull out all the, the uh, board uh, notes, and uh, I suspect we'll discover that uh, it was always billed as an adult pool. Um, but again, we have to do our due diligence and we have to be able to yeah. stand behind the facts that were there. And also, how, how did the pool get named? Uh, you know, some people call it an adult pool. Now it's called the Ocean View Pool. Uh, or, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that happened that we need to clarify. Yeah, and I think, I think just one other comment is that you have to also look back to the original amenity study, which resulted in the adult pool. When they compared Kiowa's amenities to Hilton Head and a bunch of other communities, and one thing that was lacking was an adult pool uh, you know, with the, the associated amenities associated with it. And so 
um, when you go and look back towards what had happened in the past and how it came to be and was it supposed to be family, adult, et cetera, I think that was one of the key drivers for this whole thing. And as a newer person to Kiowa, you know, who's been a part-time owner for a while, um, you know, I've kept track of these things, voted on things when, when it was appropriate. And that's, that's the way it was sold to me. Well, it was also, my recollection, and I'm, I'm glad you're going to go back and look at the record because I think the record will reflect it was always an adult pool. But it was also to somewhat mimic what the clubhouse up at the beach club where they have an adult only pool at, and then they have the, the family pool. But I, I will tell you as a, on a humorous note, my daughter, when I, she read about this, who's, she's now 18, was very, very upset because she had to wear those horrible little baby children bands with little little faces on them when she went to the pool because she was under 18 and felt she was branded because she was she was a little 17 year old girl and was not able to use the quote unquote adult pool. But in any event, one other quick thing I want to go back to because I mentioned that when we had a sign issue that Jimmy had said that if you go in the rules, the rules very clearly state if you have a sign up and you have not gotten permission from ARB, security will come out and take the sign down. That's actually in the rules, um, which is why I'm working on this, this document to try to figure out what all the rule, different rules say. It's quite a work. It's, it's, it's a learning experience. Thank you. Yes, sir. Can I come back on, a, on an issue and it really maybe call it the big picture, but I, I like to go to what I think is the threshold uh, issue, and that is really uh, governance. Uh, the board obviously sets the tone. I think one of the things we're dealing with now is a culture that arose with KICA during the time when KICA was responsible for everything, uh, before the town was in place uh, before it accepted some responsibilities for things it was uh, tasked with. And what we're seeing now is a COO, and I'm not pointing fingers at Jimmy or anything else, but a COO who the board has entrusted with almost everything. Uh, and it, it seems to be run that way. And I'm not sure the current board agrees with it or doesn't agree with it. But I think as a starting point, the board itself, and you, you say an emergency meeting, I would like to see the board go out uh, on a retreat or whatever they want to do and decide what it is they want to manage from the staff. Uh, what kind of a culture do they want in the staff? Uh, my understanding now, having seen it, talked to a lot of our neighbors, uh, is that they believe that the culture is one of compliance and revenues. Uh, all, all that KIC wants to do is get in the compliance business, increase the budget, and raise revenues from whatever source they can from the, from the, uh, the residents. Having said that, the board is responsible for the culture, not the COO, not the uh, staff. And I think you've got you've got to decide as a board what it is we really want to do so that you can manage the process, set the standard, and accomplish what I think was one of your uh, issues at the time you ran. Uh, you can evaluate the board's, uh, the staff's performance, and as you see fit, make changes if necessary. But the fact is, I think the culture and the statement of culture comes from the board. The board is then able to enforce it among the staff, and then also based on that uh, level of performance, evaluate the staff. So I think, again, if the board can get together themselves and agree, that would be a huge step forward and a first step necessary to, to make the island a little more owner friendly or resident friendly, if you will. Well, I, I think um, I could completely agree with uh, and I realized that uh, turning a super tanker around is not an easy task. 
um, what this meeting, the meeting that Brad is having, uh, the one that Dave is having with, with everyone. Uh, we can't get everyone at first, but we're going to have subsequent meetings. Is a way of demonstrating that we are changing our culture, that we do want to be a more responsive board, uh, that we do believe in civility, that we do believe in responsiveness and transparency. We also believe in women uh, and getting more women involved. We've, uh, we have lost uh, and will lose three women, and we're out there uh, with our board out outreach encouraging uh, women to run for the board. Um, as someone pointed out to me uh, yesterday in one of these uh, exchanges, women have a, a, a great uh, deal to add. They have a different perspective, perhaps. Uh, and having their brains uh, as part of the, the mix is going to be very important to us going forward. We need, we need resources. We need people who are willing to do this. I think in the past, we had some people who you know, got on the board and that was a check the box and let, let the staff run everything. And I think you have a very different uh, group of people now uh, who very much want to uh, change our perception of what we do, how we respond, and what we think our charge is. We do have an annual meeting. It's an offsite. And I think uh, your suggestion is one that uh, we should be uh, we should address during that meeting uh, and make sure that uh, we communicate back to you, uh, you know, what we are, what we stand for, and what we want to be. And perhaps, Kathy, going back to your uh, point, that's that's what uh, Dave Morley may have meant, uh, that he, you know, he wants this board to evolve and, and be more responsive. Uh, but we have to put it, we can't just say it, we have to demonstrate it. This is a demonstration, I believe. Uh, and as we go on, we look for your input and help in, in making us uh, do the right things for you. You're, you're the member owners, uh, you know, we, we get elected, but it's really your community. And we want to make sure it's, you know, as civil, fun, and nice a place as, as it was uh, the reason that we moved here. Sorry to go so, on. so, you know, I, I really, um, I support what you're doing. You know, when I was on the board, I felt that too. My recent experience uh, in this task force that I'm working on, on the adaptive management plan has not been a real positive one. And I've, I've spoken with many of you on the board about this. And so I like that you're saying publicly, this is what you want. And I challenge you for how behind the scenes when those of us as property owners are working on these kinds of projects, and hopefully there'll be more of us, that you can um, appreciate the contribution that people make, uh, acknowledge the expertise, you know, give feedback, both, uh, you know, positive and negative. That's, that's really helpful. Um, I, I think it's a really hard task that you're working on. And I hope that um, you think about how community members can be involved in helping to guide that. Because it's not just your insular discussion that happens. It's about what are the issues that are popping in our community, whether it's concrete things about a street or a road or something like that, or whether it's bigger issues, how to integrate them in your thinking and not have to wait until a November meeting. I, I applaud you for trying to get people together early to uh, put the kibosh on the uh, community anxiety. It's just, it needed to happen right away. Yeah, that, I, I felt that. I read, you know, read a lot of correspondence. I had phone calls and, and I called Dave Morley and said, we, we really need to, one way or the other, make a decision about how we're going to do this and how, how we feel. Um, and uh, again, I stress what you're going to read about the decision is going to be short term, and then we're going to dive into this and really examine it and see how we go forward uh, with what I, uh, with the pools, however you want to call them. Uh, we're going to have to make a very strong determination about what they are, what they're for, how they got to be, uh, what, what they are, and Kathy, Going back to your point, I, I got dove into your committee uh, uh, with John Luckler and some others, and I well understand that was not a good experience. 
not the kind of uh, committee experience we would like you to have. Jerry, we're at two o'clock. Oh, and we haven't heard from some folks. How, how uh, much time do we have? Yeah, Anika's hand was up. I just want to um, briefly um, agree with Kathy on what she said about having committees involved with homeowners on specific uh, decisions that the board will be considering in the future. I think it's really important that that is something that should be established. Another quick question I have is, I'm just curious about the screening process at the first gate. At one of the last meetings that we were able to get to, um, that was a big concern. And I don't know if it's changed, but I know they're still letting people in. People are just um, coming to the gate stating that they wanna to go to the Ryder Cup or the Cougar uh, Bar or something like that and they're let in. Meantime, they're traveling to the beach, they go fishing. Um, I know this for a fact because I've heard it from the people that are doing this. And I'm just curious as to what um, has changed, if anything has changed with the screening process when uh, people are applying for passes. Uh, the new technology is going to uh, allow us to have a lot more um, ability to analyze uh, where people go and uh, where they say they're going and to control, control them at the moment. Uh, people lie. They absolutely do. They, you know, and it's very difficult for our staff to say, really, you sure you're going there and not to the beach? Um, fortunately, they can make a right and go to the beach, uh, beach walker without going through anything. But they do, we do have a lot of, of issues with that. And it's one of the things we're going to be addressing. But the, but the new uh, technology suite is going to help us in terms of uh, issuing passes. Uh, controlling the number of cars that are allowed to be uh, at a rental house. Um, and I think we're always going to have a problem with people lying. And, uh, you know, that's just going to be after something we work on refinements and figuring out new ways to do that. But it, 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 Jerry, when is that, uh, that going to actually take place, the new technology? Uh, it's being implemented right now. Uh, for the most part, uh, everything's in, installed. Uh, especially at the member port, port hall. And uh, we're going to be offering some webinars so that you can see how to interface with the technology. But it's, it's really robust and it collects a lot of data. It allows you to look at your bills, to, uh, to do all sorts of things uh, that, that took maybe sometimes three or four steps before. So it, it's a is, that gonna is that going to replace the, bar the barcodes on the cars for access? For uh, ultimately, hopefully, yes. Oh, not right away? Not right away. We're working on that, but yes. Thank you. I just have one thing to say. I wanted to um, thank Philip for bringing up the problem with the um, no stop sign and the traffic at um, Buffalo Head Glen Abbey Flyway. Um, there's a bike path, a main bike path up the Alley of Oaks right past that intersection, and it is extremely dangerous, and I totally and absolutely agree with him that we need a stop sign or something there. Somebody's going to really get hurt. Thank you. Yeah, that is, issue has come up a lot. It's a very troubled area. Jerry, our first group has finished, um, so we have just a few minutes to wrap up. I did have a chat comment just to remind everybody that there is an application to serve on committees on the website. The best thing to do is to go to KICA.us and use the search bar for application. And that will take you to an application for committees. And then we would have that information to pull from as some of these task force and committees are formed. But my committee is not on there yet. This uh, is a generic form that we could gather information, but yes. And then we do name specific committees as they come up and then we're looking for specifics for those committees. So if you're interested, you know, just indicate that you want to be on that, that committee. Who, who else didn't get a chance to say something? I, I'd like to hear from someone who has not a chance to speak who would like to. Okay, um, then. Uh, well, hearing uh, none, I just have one comment to make about the committee thing. Yeah. Gary, you need, I've talked about this and Holly knows my frustrations. I have tried to volunteer on different committees over the years. I have 30 years experience at the Environmental Protection Agency as a water attorney doing some of the largest developments in the country, including in the Southeast. I know a lot about adaptive management. I know a lot about sea level rise. I know a lot about all of those issues associated with 20, 30,000 acre developments. 
I have tried to get involved on the committees themselves and all I get is nothing. Um, maybe you can join this, the sidebar committee or something. I, I go out in the field and I meet with Lucas all the time and we talk a lot about what he's doing. But it's just as frustrating to me that if you have people, and I know there's lots of people on this island that have a lot of very valid, important experience, and yet they really can't get engaged because nobody, I don't know how you do it. Well, it's up to us to, uh, to create a process that makes it easier. And I, you know, we've heard this from a lot of quarters and, and uh, you know, we're gonna get better at it and we hear you. Jerry, five seconds. Uh, if, if and when you have the board meeting, uh, which you're going to have in the spring, I guess, uh, to discuss the issue of KICA culture, if that's the right word for it. Uh, mm -hmm. I would suggest you excuse staff and make this a board issue, not a community issue. Okay, thank you. All right, anything else? I'm going to let them know that we are ready. Thank you all very much. I really appreciate your comments. And if there's something you wanted to say that or either you were shy or didn't want to uh, say it on camera, just email me, jerry.mcgee at kika.us. I'll be happy to answer your question or find somebody you can. Thank you, Jerry. At the final two minute warning. So in just a few minutes, they'll be bringing um, everyone back over or, or ending the session. I just want to say thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Make sure you heard that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate it. Um, I agree. Thank you. Good luck with the effort, Jerry. <laughs> Good. Well, I'm, I'm glad you all took the time to show up. Uh, you know, this is supposed to be the time of our lives and we're out there having fun. <laughs> here, here I am back with a full-time job. <laughs> but it's worth it. It, it really is. Uh, uh, I, I was at, uh, I, I think that the one nice change that we've made, by the way, is that running for the board is no longer a process whereby you're vetted by a committee and then the little box is checked that you've been approved. Uh, it is now, it's going to be up to you to run. There, there will be a process, but no one is going to tell anybody that, that uh, you're an approved candidate or a not approved candidate. Uh, you'll be able to do that. Again, I, if you know qualified uh, women who you feel uh, would be fit to run, encourage them to run. Uh, we do not want to have a, a, a climate where uh, women feel they are not welcome, not appreciated, not listened to. Um, and uh, I, have a, I have a daughter who runs my life along with my wife, so I'm very, 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 very happy to work with smart, smart women. One quick comment. Me out a lot. Just one other quick comment. I don't expect an answer or discussion about it. I noticed there was some, some listserv discussion when the whole change in the board was made recently. And the Key Island developer representative became the treasurer of Kika. And there were some raised eyebrows about is it appropriate for the developer to be the treasurer? And I don't know. I, I don't Let me know. answer that quickly because we're going to need to cut off. It's a short term. Uh... We'll just give a couple of seconds while everyone rejoins to conclude the meeting. Looks like most everyone is here now. Okay. Well, welcome back. Um, I hope you had productive discussions. I'm sure you did. Uh, again, as we said, this is the beginning, not the end. Uh, we want to hear from you. Um, we will be back in touch with you on our end, but we also want to hear from you. Uh, I think I, I gave my group, uh, you know, 
as we said, the, the board at Kika.us does actually go to the board now. So if you want to write to all the board, that's a good email. If you want a specific board member, it's pretty easy to identify. For example, mine is brad.mcelvain at kika.us. Um, and so it's a pretty easy uh, formula to figure out that their uh, email addresses. Um, and, um, but again, thank you all. I appreciate everybody who, and their interest in Kiowa and trying to help us make this place better. And uh, hopefully together we will do that. And uh, uh, looks like a pretty nice day or sort of a nice day. So um, with that, thank you. And Dave and Jerry, anything from you guys? Well, just that my email, I, I think, and I, every session I keep, I never send myself an email. I think it's david.destefano at kiko.us. It but, is. Uh, you know, you can feel free to uh, uh, email me directly at any time. Yep, Jerry, jerry.mcgee at kiko.us. Again, same sentiment. All right, well, thank you all. Well, thank you all for your service. We appreciate you being on the board. Well, and importantly is uh, applaud uh, this initiative. I think it's, it's great uh, to hear the homeowners' uh, opinions on many issues. So I applaud this initiative. Thanks, Alex. Yep, thank you guys for pulling us together and we look forward to more discussions. Thank you, everybody. Really appreciate you taking the time. Yep. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.